Just the strengthening, the mobility. Um, you know, he'll, he'll do some light court stuff you know, pregame, and it's just trying to build his strength up, his tolerance. Um, you know, before he can get to that ramp up stage, want to make sure we're progressing. You know, in a diligent pattern, so hopefully to avoid any setbacks. Um, did you guys come away from the trip without any other injuries, or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just bumps and bruises of a long trip, but beyond that, nothing significant. When he does come back, you think he could be on a strict minutes restriction, kind of like Delon is. Well, he was when he when he came back, and we just we never got to that threshold. It's one of those things with hamstrings. It's not an exact science, and sadly, we're seeing it around the league. A lot of guys are having a lot of soft tissue injuries, uh, for whatever reasons. I'm not sure, but um, it, you know, we're, we're mindful of all of that. And the minute restrictions are there in place, and we've been pretty, you know, diligent with that. It's just unfortunate that it, you know it popped up and you know started to, you know aggravate it. Just have to you know calm it down, let it rest, build the strength back, and kind of start that process over. What was the cap that he wasn't able to reach? I was 32. Oh, 32. Yeah, I mean he was he was good to go, and um, you know he normally plays about 36, but we were trying to keep him in that you know 28 to 32 minute range, and he wound up playing I think 13 plus minutes in that game. Mm -hmm. So. Does the staff explain to you like why those just keeping him under those four minutes, four to six minutes? Well, it's not just the, the four minutes in that game. You've got to think about the density of all the games, you know, all the practices, all the, the, that workload is factored in. Um, and the aggregate of all of that is kind of, you know, what they look at is pre-practice work, is post-practice work, all of that, you know, has a play in it. Obviously, the game minutes are different, you know, the, the intensity of it, the, the other stressors that go into a game. But, um, you know, that they know the science behind it, so we, we always lean on their recommendations and try to uh, adhere to those. After the game in OKC, um, KP actually called us over in the, in the locker room and said that he wanted to take some responsibility for the defense. I don't know if he said the same thing after. I think a lot of people did. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, what's the significance of that? Oh, that's huge. I mean, you know, guy taking ownership of it. He's not alone in that. I think uh, in general, um, we've been really competitive. Even through the, that tough stretch, we were competitive. And I thought that was one of a, you know, small set of games where we didn't approach the right way. We, we didn't come out and give ourselves much of a chance in that first quarter um, on either end. Defensively, had some lapses. Offensively, I thought we were, you know, stagnant, selfish at times, didn't move the ball. And, you know, our spacing was poor. So there's a lot of layers to it, but I want to chalk it up to, uh, you know, um, an off night, hopefully, and we can get back to playing, you know, our style of basketball. Oh, yeah, I mean, you're taking ownership of it. That's no, great. I mean, I think well, a lot of guys do that, you know, within the locker room, in the film session. They see it. They know it. Um, but it's a good sign for one of, the, one of your core leaders to step up and admit fault, to say, you know what, I didn't play my best game. I didn't do everything I could have possibly done, or I didn't do it well enough. That's fine. You know, I think that, that's growth and that's leadership. But Wes, is it, and while all that's welcome, and perhaps he and Gaff could have played better in terms of setting a tone, wasn't the start of that game in large part predicated on their, the Thunder's defensive pressure and the Wizards' difficulty of handling it? Yeah, at times. I mean, well, we knew going in, they're, they're a top, you know, top five, top three steel team. And, you know, heavy nail, heavy shrink team, they're going to, you know, pack the paint, protect the rim. And we didn't get off the ball in a timely manner. So we started to play in crowds a bit. Uh, like I said before, our spacing wasn't always great, which kind of lent to some of those turnovers. Um, so, in essence, at times we were guarding ourselves. What do you think has led to Gaff's uh, recent uptick in offense? Oh, I think a lot of it is his, um, you know, he's done a pretty good job of finishing around the rim, around the paint. Um, he's gotten better with his spatial discipline, you know, you know, letting the ball find him, getting to the offensive boards. Um, you know, obviously his paint finishes, his rolls are impactful. Uh, he's playing his his game. He's not trying to do too much. He's letting the game come to, uh, come to him. Guys are looking to him um, as a roller, as a finisher, as a lob threat. So uh, you know, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. But he's playing with just a level of confidence, in, in general, a level of physicality that you know I think you know for a guy with his athleticism really helps him. I know it's his job to protect the rim, but what does it say about him to kind of tweak his elbow and then be right there again when Giannis went after the went after him? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, once again, it's it shows a little, um, you know, a little toughness mentally, physically, that you're going to play through some things. But uh, accepting that challenge, you know, it's it's easy to you got a guy like that and the way he plays to you know kind of bail out at times. But you know, whether the guy scores or not, he's going to have to earn it. And I think it's just a mindset. 
it's good for all of us to have. I'm sure we'll ask you a lot of mid-season questions over the next uh, few days, but as I see Johnny shooting over there, just kind of halfway through his rookie season, how would you sum it up? Well, you know, I think the injuries have been a, a big piece of it, you know, and it's hard to really evaluate a guy who hasn't had a ton of opportunities here. I've seen a lot of growth with his G League development, you know, the level of confidence he's playing with. Uh, I think he's starting to see the game slow down for him. Um, offensively, uh, I think he's starting to settle in and understand the, the types of plays, types of shots we want and need him to take. Um, so there's a lot of growth there. You know, I know it's not translating as fast as, you know, maybe we would all like to see, but I think it, there is growth. Really, it's just good just to be back home. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say about it because, you know, being on the road, it is tough. Just all the plane rides and all the bus rides and all the getting used to different time zones, so on and so on. The list goes on. So really just being back home right now for this good little stretch is something good for us because, you know, we're back home, protecting home court. You know, we're right down the street from our houses and stuff. So pretty sure everybody's happy about that one. <laughs> Of uh, double digit scoring games. What's led to your recent offensive uptick? Really just holding myself accountable in areas that I've lacked in. Mainly just like the defensive end, being more aware on the defensive end because I'm in more of a position to where I'm guarding the perimeter a lot more now since me and KP are on the floor at the same time. So just really just trying to find ways to keep myself out of foul trouble early. Something that's helping me out a lot. And some really just leading into focusing on defense that's going to lead to easy offense for us because most of the scenes that we were playing. Um, Ever since we started with just like the big lineup, you know, when we get stops, we run. That's the main thing. And that was like the main kind of like focus over the, you know, span when we started playing with the big lineup, get stops and just run the floor. It's the main thing because it was a lot of teams that we played that was kind of like lacking in the transition defense area and just really just being dominant in the paint. What about the shots that uh, the other guys in the starting lineup can create for you? Um, I mean, it's good because most of the time, you know, I'm helping guys get shots off to where I'm putting myself in a position to get the rebound. You know, we're making a lot of bigs down the floor, have to make decisions on whether they're going to come contest the guy that's coming down off the screen or if they're going to come, you know, try to box me out, keep me from getting on the glass and just putting, you know, energy in the, um, on the basket, certain, uh, so on and so forth. But the shots that we're creating night in, night out is something that, you know, we're doing because we're playing for each other and we're playing with a lot of confidence as well. Uh, you know, saying in basketball, make a business decision. I don't think I've ever seen you make a business decision. It seems like you always uh, contest at the rim. <laughs> My business decision is going 110% every time. And if that takes for me to have to try to go contest a dunk, you know, go guard, you know, the best player on the floor, whatever it takes to win, you know, I'm basically out there trying to do the best I can. You know, I really don't care about the highlights or anything like that. I get a good laugh out of it if I'm on the back end of a highlight or if I'm the main guy in a highlight. But other than that, I really don't care about it. You know, people like make business decisions all the time. My business decision is playing defense. That's the main thing. You see my case in point, you know, you tweak your elbow and then you go up uh, mm -hmm. against Giannis again at the rim. Mm -hmm. What's the key to challenging a player like that at, at the rim? Uh, of course, just, you know, accepting that challenge mainly. You know, most of the time there would be, you know, in a position to where I'm at, you know, you would get out of the way. If a guy coming downhill, it's like a steamroller train, you know. But really just me, you know, I've been like that all my career, just basketball-wise. You know, I endure the pain, and I go out and I just play through it, plain and simple. You know, it really don't matter who's in front of me. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to give it 110% guard, and whether they score it or not, that's the main thing. You know, just really just giving that extra effort, you know, everywhere on the floor. I know it's, like, not ideal for, you know, somebody in my position, but I don't care. <laughs> the uh, practice shirts the other day? Oh, it was it was dope. Um, they told me that it was going to be kind of like a fusion of, you know, me and just like some of the stuff that I like with anime and stuff, but I didn't know they were going to put my head on Vegeta. That was dope. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to do that at all. But um, uh, so uh, with Dragon Ball Z, you got Goku, who's the main character, of course. Um, you got Vegeta, who was like a bad guy. Oh, but at yeah, it's somewhat, but Vegeta turned, but Vegeta was turned good because of how strong Goku got, and Vegeta was jealous of that. You know, he was like, "Ah, oh, you know, he gonna be so strong. I want to be that way too." You know what I'm saying? So he kind of like turned the other cheek. It was like, "I bet I'm gonna work to fight Earth, fight for Earth, and stuff like that." So that's Vegeta, um, and it was dope just kind of like seeing that costume with my head on it and stuff. I was like, "Man, that's tough. That's tough." I'm waiting right now to go get some from the equipment guys, you know, Royce and Jorge, they said they was going to get me right after we got home, so I'm making sure I'm going to get those shirts before I leave here. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's, well, basically, basically. <laughs> when you do uh, contest a guy trying to dunk on you, um, how much of it is 
timing to get your hand up there so it doesn't like hit the rim or like I mean for just expl could you explain that for someone who's never jumped that high before? <laughs> um, I would say yes it's a bit of timing and just really just a bit of just like you know you just, it's just really just a mindset you know no matter if they dunk it or not you know just going up and trying to get some type of hand on the ball that's the main thing but other than that I just try to go up whether I'm trying to jump through you or I jump up there and meet you at the rim so you know really just timing and you know, I don't know, not being scared, I would say, I don't know. <laughs> I can't really fully, like, explain it to, like, an extent, but I just know timing is a bit of a part of it, for sure. Go. Yes, thank you. Of course.